Are you looking for a hair transplant specialist? I've found a doctor that you just might like. Stick around and find out who. Hey everyone, welcome to the Hair Transplant Channel. My name is Joe Tillman and you are watching the official YouTube channel for Hair Transplant Mentor. Dot com. Right, if you've been doing any sort of research online over the past six months to maybe even a year, you might have seen this guy. Hi, my name is Barry. I've had a hair transplant with Dr. Manny. I know when I saw this, I was pretty surprised because I've not really seen anyone document their patient results quite like this. I'm not saying it's the first guy to ever do this, but it is the first time I've ever seen it, or at least that it's ever stood out to me because the result was also pretty damn good. And um, I'm talking about Dr. Manny Matal of London, UK. Right, Dr. Manny, um, he's someone that I've, I've known now for at least a year and a half because that's when he first reached out and applied to become a hair transplant mentor doctor. And um, I'm pretty proud of that actually because uh, it just reinforces the fact that not just anyone can join. Uh, there is a process to this. I do put doctors through the ringer to make sure that they are worth your consideration. And even Dr. Matal, he even said to me that looking at all the paperwork I sent to him of what the requirements were, he said it's like writing a thesis. So um, I thought that was actually pretty cool because it's just validation for what I do. A little bit about his backstory. He was going to go into aesthetic surgery other than hair transplant surgery, but he hurt his ankle really bad and that actually put him back on the track towards hair transplant surgery because you don't have to stand on your feet all day to perform a hair transplant. You can sit as, as a doctor. And I thought that was an interesting turn of events for his life. And he tells me that he's glad that that happened because he loves what he does now. He really does enjoy it. And he's often talking, you can even see on his Instagram where he's got some video, he's often talking about not just the science, but the artistry that goes along with hair restoration surgery, which is absolutely correct. It is an art and a science. And one of the things that I really liked about his experience before he got his own practice was he'd worked at several different clinics throughout the UK and what he told me was that he was inspired by the fact that so many different clinics do things so many different ways that he was able to take little nuggets, little pieces of what different clinics do and apply it to his own practice. But the other thing is that he learned the, the difference between good technicians and bad technicians and that really helped him to establish a training pro protocol for his technicians so that he has a team that he feels is trustworthy. So before we continue, I wanna let you know that I'm doing things a bit differently this time with this video where normally when I'm introducing a new doctor, I show all kinds of different results. This time I'm going to be focusing on one kind of result that is male hairlines. And in future videos, um, I'll be making more videos about female hairlines, repair cases, and larger, uh, larger Norwood or higher Norwood cases as well. So without further ado, let's jump into male hairlines. So first up, we're looking at a 41 year old male. He had 2200 grafts in one session. Um, this was FUE and a 0.8 millimeter punch was used for the extractions. And what I like about this case is we have a nice conservative hairline, but with 2200 grafts, that's actually a pretty decent amount for this small area. Uh, it's, it's roughly, you know, 1100 grafts per temple region. And I thought that was a great approach with this. The hairline's high enough to where we don't need temple point reconstruction, um, which is nice because it saves hair. It saves donor hair. But then the result that you're gonna see, it makes complete sense why he went this route. I mean, it kind of speaks for itself right here. Um, the naturalness is just undeniable. I think it's a fantastic result to start with. And at this angle here, you can see those hairs kind of exiting at, at the proper angle more flatter towards the plane of the scalp and then they kind of come up and that's just basically due to the hairstyle. And another thing to notice on this is that the hair, it all behaves the same. You have a, the, this wave through that frontal hairline and into the frontal third and that can only be achieved because all the hairs are placed in the same angle direction on the scalp. And so when they grow out, uh, they will take on, it, it's actually very common that transplanted hair will take on some sort of wave, but it's not individual hairs, it's continuous throughout the area that was placed. And once that new hair grows in, it just behaves like it was always there. Like it was never, like it never fallen out and is, is never been replaced. And with the comb through, I mean, my God, it's, it just really falls exactly the way it should, just like a natural head of hair. And I really don't think that, you know, I could start this, this video about Dr. Manny with a better result. I, I think this is just outstanding. And of course, we'll look at the donor area and we're combing through it. Um, I mean, there's zero signs of surgery. 
great start to the video. Good job. Next up, we've got another case of 2200 graphs via FUE, and I'm going to read uh, Dr. Manny's notes on this one. Uh, this is a 18 month follow up with uh, an amazing patient result. Uh, the, the guy who has gone on to become a good friend, okay? Uh, he works on a nuclear power plant and has a radioactive personality. Anyway, we did 2,200 graphs for him restoring frontal, those were his words. Uh, anyway, we did 2,200 graphs for him restoring the frontal third of the scalp. As you scroll through, you can see how natural his outcome is. Great result. I mean, when you look at, when you look at this hairline, the naturalness, like that's, that's what I'm always looking for. If you're a follower of this channel, you know I'm always looking for naturalness first and foremost, and that's what we have here. Really beautiful use of singles, the 300, and, I think he said 328 singles in the front really nice to accentuate the naturalness of this. There's a nice soft transition zone, which is difficult to do with dark hair and fair skin. The guy's got you know, pretty fair skin. So that's another bonus on this is, you know, you're, you're fighting the hair and skin contrast ratio as well as multi-hair graphs. So when you can deal with both of those, that means it's natural and that certainly is what we have here. And of course the donor area, it's not, it's not a short haircut, but it's still really thick looking. Uh, regardless, and just a great result overall. Okay, next up, we got a 36-year-old patient who, according to Dr. Uh, Mattal's notes, wanted to help re uh, restore his hairline, but also to maintain the natural off-center hairline so that less people would know he had anything done. Uh, prior to the procedure, we started him on finasteride to see if there would be an improvement to the hair and to mitigate any side effects. Total of 2,000 grafts were placed into the hairline. Uh, note that the patient has a cowlick in the frontal uh, or, or just off center from the hairline, which is typical um, of most cowlicks. And um, yeah, it's difficult to recreate these. Most clinics can't do it. They may say they can, but then they'll offer to destroy that cowlick by placing a blade into those hairs to kill them to, to build a new hairline. Like I'm, I'm, this is a different subject for a different video, but um, if your doctor offers to destroy your cowlick, get up and leave. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Manny Mittal, apparently he can recreate the cowlick and thicken the cowlick as he's done in these photos here. Um, really nice density as well with the, was it 2000? Yeah, with 2000 graphs. And we're, we're doing actually the, the comb through, the beginning comb through with damp hair, which can actually make it seem a bit thinner than it really would be if he was just walking around with dry hair. So. This is a bold move. It's a nice move because uh, you know, it's very high resolution, but then we get into the actual video of the comb through, looking good on that. Um, the, the front has nice singles. It's a good shape also, and you can see where that cowlick um, is kind of off center, and it just adds more naturalness by maintaining that cowlick. And then we get back into the donor area, combing up through it, zero, absolutely zero indication of surgery, which is what you want for your hair transplant result, well done. Okay, next up, we got a 36 year old male. He had 2,158 grafts. I, I like the uh, before image here. We've got the mapping out of that recipient area. The hairline, um, it's not too aggressive because while it is fairly straight, it's not too low. Um, and that means everything because you can, st you can still have some closed off temples um, with a slightly higher hairline, but once you start lowering everything, then that, that changes the dynamics of the graft count, uh, the donor management, and uh, the possibility of future surgeries. So I, I think this was the right approach. Let's just go ahead and look through this because um, what we have here, actually there's, okay, so first off, we got the uh, day after, nice healing, you know, nothing remarkable about this. It's pretty unremarkable actually. But then I want you to look at the donor area after surgery, uh, the spacing on these extraction points is quite big. There's a lot of space in between these extraction points and being uh, over 2100 grafts, that's nice to see because that means there's zero chance that anyone will ever notice that surgery was done once everything's healed up. He'll probably be able to have a really nice short haircut given that the extraction points themselves will heal nicely with a small dot at most, but it's a spacing that prevents the appearance of any sort of donor thinning. That's the secret, that's the key. Let's continue. Um, yeah, so then the result is improving. You can see that the different stages of development, uh, you have a few months going on, but then the, the big one that got me was, I, I think this is 10 months. I, I, I might, I'll put it in the bottom of the screen. 
but spiking his hair, looking good, and then back in the office for, um, for the hair breadth to pull it back. You can see the density. You can see the naturalness. Nice video showing the different angles here. And then, of course, going into the donor area, there's really nothing remarkable here to see except for the fact that there's nothing remarkable to see, which is what you want. So great job again. Next patient. Okay, next up, um, I don't have a lot of notes on this guy. Uh, he's 10 months post-op. He, uh, he had 1,800 grafts. What I like about this is you know, it's a great starting point. I, I like this case because I like, I like showing blonde hair cases. I, I, think, I think they're just fantastic. So, you know, nice, nice hairline design, not too low again, but certainly changing the dynamics, the frame of the patient's face. And then 10 months later, I mean, that's a phenomenal transformation. And I love the messiness of his hair. It looks really great. You know, he's got the option to have that messy look. And of course, back in the office and, you know, hair pulled back, you can see the density. You can see the angles. I, I love the angles that they're showing. Um, you know, really natural result. And what I really think is telling on results like this is Dr. Manny is proud of his hairlines, obviously, because he's pulling the hair back so you can see it. There are actually still some clinics out there that don't do that. They don't lift the hair. They don't brush it back. Um, he's making a point to put a hair bread in their hair to hold it back so you can see that hairline result. Donor area, um, not the best photo, but it's obviously, you know, not been you know, destroyed or moth-eaten, looks pretty good. So let's move on to the next one, good job. Final patient, 2100 grafts, only seven months post-op. You can see the uh, well-defined area of loss marked out with a map uh, by Dr. Matal and nothing but comb throughs on this one. Beautiful, beautiful result, very natural. I'm always looking for natural. That's the most important thing to me. It should be the most important thing for you. Um, and Dr. Matal is pulling it off. Uh, really great result here. You look at the donor area, no signs of surgery whatsoever, blah, blah, blah. It just keeps getting better and better. And um, yeah, so that's it for the results. A few things about Dr. Matal. As far as how he performs surgery, he does perform FUE and FUT. Yes, he does perform strip surgery, although most of his patients are asking for FUE. He does recognize the value of strip surgery for the right patient. So, um, you know, we've had conversations about that and it's nice to see that we see eye to eye on that. As far as how he performs the surgery, uh, as far as FUE goes, uh, he, he actually uses different tools. He has all the more famous um, or more commonly used motorized tools. He's got uh, the WAS system. He's got the Trivellini system. He has, I believe, uh, the U-graft. And I think he has, I, I think it might be it. Maybe he's got something else. And as far as placement, I thought this was interesting. He's using the KEEP system for placement of graphs. Uh, when he's placing graphs and his technicians are placing graphs, uh, this is a unique system that was developed by ASMED and he really loves this. We had, a, we had a discussion about this. I know about this because I was actually trained at ASMED on how to use these uh, implanter pins and they're not an implanter pin in the traditional sense because they're blunt and they're not designed to just um, you know, insert and then th the graph comes out on its own. Uh, you can see Dr. Manny here, he's actually sliding the graft into the incision using the KEEP system as a conduit into the, uh, into the incision. I uh, had some nice conversations with him about that. He is a doctor only facility, meaning that uh, there are no techs doing the surgery, if that's what's important to you. Um, I do like the dedication that he's giving to his craft where he only works on one patient a day. Um, I think I said this earlier, he, only do, he will only do, I think up to 2,500 grafts in one surgery. He doesn't try to push the, the envelope. He doesn't try to you know, get fancy and do really big sessions in one day. He keeps it simple. He keeps it you know, easy for himself and for his staff. Um, staff using microscopes, not just microscopes, but they're using Mantis microscopes, which are the best in the industry. Um, and the reason for that is they allow for a comfortable viewing position. You're not just sticking your eyes up against, you know, microscope uh, lenses like this. It's, it's almost, well, it is a screen where you're able to uh, use both eyes looking through without having to press up against anything. It's very comfortable. I've used them before. Um, and he's got these for his technicians where they're sorting and refining graphs. And this is what's really important about the use of microscopes is they're not just for separating graphs, for identifying singles, doubles, triples, whatever. They're actually for creating graphs. So if you don't have enough singles for a proper hairline or you know, whatever you're doing, you can make them turning doubles into singles, triples into singles, depending on how they're oriented naturally when they're extracted. So 
uh, that's really important. Um, and the other thing, I, I think I mentioned this before, is he, he does really care about training his technicians the proper way. Uh, he was telling me that he really learned the differences between good and bad techs when he was working at different clinics. Uh, that was something that was really valuable for him as a doctor to learn and grow what not to do and what to do to make his practice the best it can be. So Dr. Manny Batal, he is an IAHS accepted member. Uh, he is now a hair transplant mentor accepted member. And, and so I think he's worth considering in a country where there aren't a lot of good hair transplant surgeons. In fact, like I could make another video about this, there are very few good hair transplant surgeons in the UK. This is one of them. Go check him out, tell him Joe sent you. And if you like this video, don't forget to click the like button and subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Ring the bell for all notifications because I do have more videos and more doctors I'm going to be talking about real soon. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Peace. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.